After two years of COVID restrictions today, it marks a big step. So how solid is the ground beneath us? A big part of the government's confidence is the falling numbers of hospitalisations and deaths, way down on where they were in previous waves. But deaths with COVID still significant, averaging around 140 deaths a day. So does ending the legal requirement to self-isolate change that trajectory? Well, one thing Plan B taught us is it depends on people's behaviour. In some aspects of life, we're back at pre-pandemic levels of behaviour. Look at essential shopping here in blue, back up to the dotted line where it was before the pandemic. But people on public transport are still well below normal levels here in red. We know workplaces are not at usual capacity, so lots of room for mixing to increase and with it, infections. Arguably, more significant is ending free testing. Why is that important? Well, look here at cases from the government dashboard, seemingly falling rapidly. But look now at how many tests we're doing. Much of that fall in case numbers is because we're not testing as much after ending asymptomatic and travel testing last month. A good thing then that we're keeping the ONS infection survey, which gives a far truer picture. It shows cases are not falling at the speed there on the dashboard. In fact, around one in 20 people currently have COVID in England, a stubbornly high number. Given that, what do today's changes mean for those who've been advising government throughout the pandemic? Personally, I don't see this as a cliff edge moment. Right. I see this as, a, as part of a necessary progression of how do you live with a new pathogen. At some point, you need to get science, you need to get industry and business and the population back up to running at full steam. I think what we've got to hope is that good behavior and good leadership leads to sensible uh, reactions from our population. The insurance policy against the resurgence in infections and the threat of new variants, of course, is vaccines. 98% of the population have antibodies in England now, and it's similar in other nations, largely due to vaccination. The vaccines, of course, mean far fewer people of dying of COVID, and that means attention should naturally shift, of course, to those at risk of dying from something else. The number of people waiting for treatment on the NHS has been growing for 18 months and has now topped off at over 6 million people. Today, the government has taken another calculated risk with COVID, hoping we follow guidance rather than rules, freeing up resources for the other risks we face.